So within the world of Cyberpunk 2077 and your character in which you will play, before being let loose into Night City, you first have to pick your character's backstory. Today I'll bring you all you need to know about each backstory to hopefully help you make the right choice. How's it going guys? My name's DPJ and if you enjoyed the video leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe. Also guys to build up the hype surrounding this game I'm giving away two copies on each platform. To enter it's pretty simple. Drop a like on this video and leave a comment down below. The more of my cyberpunk videos you like, watch and comment on the more of a chance you have of winning. Winners will be announced a week before the game's release on November 19th and good luck. So before going into this game's main campaign and additional side missions, you are first asked to select a life path or backstory for your character. These backstories truly affect the way in which you will experience the game, as each backstory sees V, the character in which you play, being perceived differently, meaning things such as opportunities, dialogue options and much more will differ. So today we check out all three life paths to hopefully help you decide which one you feel is best to choose. Now it's important to note, no matter which life path you choose, you will enter the game after around about doing 30 minutes of gameplay for that backstory at the exact same point. The backstory is only there to give your character a history. It's this history though, which will affect the game going forward. Another important point, each life path has its positives and negatives, but depending on how you decide to play the game, you can work both positives and negatives in your favour. So the three life paths are Nomad, Street Kid and Corporate. So let's first check out Nomad. So a brief description. Roaming the Badlands, looting scrapyards, raiding fuel depots. Life on the road wasn't easy, but growing up in a Nomad clan has its perks. Honesty, integrity and a love of freedom. Qualities that few in Night City possess and no amount of money can buy. So picking a Nomad life path for your character, your story will begin in the Badlands at a small mechanic shop. Parting their way with Rebecca's clan, V is undertaking a risky job to smuggle a valuable package into Night City. In this version of the prologue, Jackie Wells is V's partner in crime in breaking through the border. The situation escalates when Arizaka guards surround V and Jackie in their car, demanding that the corporate property the two are carrying is handing over. Chased through their biotechnica facility on the city's outskirts, the two find shelter in a garage and open their mysterious package. Inside it is a live iguana. So theoretically, if you picked Nomad, Nomad V comes from outside the city walls, the Badlands. There are no speed limits in the wastelands. Survival and values here are dictated by the tight bonds formed within local tribes, whose members freely choose to become a part of such a family. Freedom has always been an important part of life in the Badlands. Nomad V grew up with one of the local tribes, but something has changed. Perhaps it's time to find a new beginning inside the walls of the chaotic Night City after all. Picking Nomad, you will enter the game with unique experiences and knowledge of gangs, cars and equipment. And after all, Nomad V comes from a place that has both a distant and overwhelmingly prominent relationship with the Night City security wing. You are intimately familiar with the ways of working around the city's demands by bypassing its influence. Of course, whether to maintain the old affiliations and values will be up to you people. Okay, so on to Street Kid. Brief description here. They say if you want to understand the streets, you gotta live them. Gangs, fixers, those small time pushers. You were raised by them all. Down here the law of the jungle dictates the weak to serve the strong. The only law in Night City you have yet to break. So picking a street kid path for your character, your journey will begin in Haywood's Bar, Al Coyote Coho. In exchange for a favour, V's friend Pepe will ask them to pay a visit to the local fixer and settle Pepe's debt for him. The fixer in turn will involve V in a robbery to cover the debt. V will be tasked with stealing a car that belongs to an Arizaka corporal. V hitches a ride with an old friend, Pedri, an also prominent figure in the area. On their way to Westbrook, they have a brief confrontation with a 6th Street gang member. V's quick job with the car, fairly easy since they were given the key, is interrupted by Jackie Wales. Here, he appeared as Pedri's driver who decided to intercept the car V talked about with Pedro and make some profit for himself. Both are found on the spot and arrested by the NCPD and their inspector, Stints. Stints recognises both Jackie and V, arriving to the scene, Kaoru Rujioka. 
the owner of the car. He suggests that the criminals are dumped in the river. Instead, the officers knock the two out and leave them in the alley. As a street kid, V grew up in Haywood learning to survive on the streets and depending on some people as if they are family. Some people might know you. Who knows where from? Gangs, fixers, mysterious strangers, the police too. And the majority of your life was spent avoiding their prying gazes, not always successfully. But again, that was your relationship with all Night City's corporals and their people. Just avoid them until you no longer can. So Street Kid sounds quite interesting to me, I'm not going to lie. Okay, so lastly of the life paths, we have corporate. Brief description. Few leave the corporate world with their lives. Few are still with their souls intact. You've been there. You've bent the rules, exploited secrets and weaponized information. There's no such thing as a fair game. Only winners and losers. So picking a corporate life path for your character, your story will begin in the city centre, inside the Arazaka HQ tower. Vomiting into a sink in front of a bathroom mirror, counterintelligence V. Arthur Jenkins, a higher Arazaka executive and V's boss, calls V in. He asks V to discreetly take out Susan Ebenerfi, Arthur's victorious opponent in the fight for the promotion he was interested in. Now, technically Arthur's boss. In this version of events, Jackie Wells is an unaffiliated friend of V and also V's best option for killing Susan without tracing it back to Arazaka. Both meet up inside Lizzie's bar in the Watson district. After V flies there in a nicely outfitted Arazaka AV and has the iconic encounter with the basketball players on the roof of the building. However, before V and Jackie can carry out their plan, Susan pays them a visit within the bar with two Arazaka security guards with an appearance of sumo wrestlers. V's Arasaka cyberware is disconnected, V's life-saving trauma team insurance is ended and the bank account funds are emptied. Jackie protects V from being taken away by force and offers to help V get back on his feet. So Arasaka hungrily is fighting for the crown of Night City. Central locations and ports already belong to the mega corporation and you have always been a part of it all. Fighting unforgivable battles within the headquarters to climb the corporate ladder, you are trusted with the most sensitive counter intel jobs, and this time Arazaka's stability depends on you. But what happens when the cold blooded system turns against its best people? Where do you go when the most powerful organization in the Night City knows everything about you? These are only some of the many questions you will have to figure out once everything you have known in life falls apart. If Arizaka is one of the villains of Cyberpunk 2077's story, then you can confidently say that you have looked the dragon in its mouth. You know the most powerful people in the city, leaders of the corporation with the influence that spreads way beyond Night City. You easily read between the lines. You know the system of mass surveillance inside out. You found a way out of some of the most controlled deals. You kept a straight face in front of the most intimidating people. Someone might think that someone of your kind has no chances of survival outside of Arazaka's sheltering headquarters, but you beg to differ. And those are it guys. And well, some seriously interesting options for you to think about. A nomad leaving your family behind, heading straight into Night City. A street kid having rep already on the streets, but is that a good thing or a bad thing? Or corporate, a comfortable, well-paid corporate agent with ties to some top dogs, but maybe not to those lower leveled gangs. Well guys, those are the backstories and partly the mission life paths you will experience. For me, I don't know why, I first thought I'd probably go with Street Kid, but I'm more so for some reason feeling that corporal connection here, yeah, but that's just me. Where gangs might recognise me as an agent, but if I can also tie in some connections down below, I feel I get the best part of both worlds. But I mean, what's going on with a nomad? Probably in my opinion the best option as an outsider, not known within the night city streets by anyone. Well people, the choice is yours. Let me know who you'll be picking down below in that comments section. Nomad, Street Kid, Corpo, let me know. On that note guys, the end of the video has arrived. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more Cyberpunk, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video, I upload can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.